Lesson 39, Zeal of Jesus. In today's lesson, we will see Jesus riding as a triumphant king into Jerusalem and chasing away the thieves from the temple area because of his zeal. Also, we learn the power of prayers made in sincere faith. When questioned by the religious authorities, Jesus also questions them, catching them in their own trap. Jesus sent two of his disciples to Bethany to collect a colt of a donkey, but as they were taking the animal, some questioned them, and so they explained that the Lord had need of it, and so they let them take the animal. Bethany was a place Jesus often stayed, and he had friends in the town, such as the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. These people loved Jesus, and when they heard of his need, they were glad to provide whatever he asked for. It is wonderful to belong to a community of believers where there is such a spirit of love and obedience to Christ that they are glad to serve him and supply to him what he asks. Perhaps you are fortunate to belong to such a church or you are helping to make your church like this. As Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on the donkey, people laid down their clothes and branches in the way and shouted out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. The people were confessing by their shouts that they recognized Jesus as their king and their expected Messiah. The word Hosanna means save now and shows that the people were expecting a triumphant reigning king that would take over the rule of Israel and cast out the Romans. However, their excitement and shouts would soon turn to treachery and betrayal when their hopes of a reigning Messiah were dashed. It was only a few days later the people would be crying out for his crucifixion. We can see from this that most people embrace religion for what it gives them. If it promises to make them rich, prosperous and free from tyranny, oppression and poverty, they are very happy to have it. But when it does not promise these immediate rewards, they are not interested and even hate religion. This is because our human nature hates to make sacrifices, give and serve freely. In our sin nature, we are greedy and self-centered, wanting immediate satisfaction. True Christianity does not offer immediate relief from our problems, but it does promise us a place in heaven if we are born of God. When Jesus passed by a fig tree the next morning and was looking for something to eat, he did not find any fruit on the tree, and so he cursed the tree. This is a picture of the nation of Israel, for the Lord had come to this nation and was looking for some fruit, something that would please God, but instead the Lord found only false religion, greed, hatred, and disobedience. When Jesus entered the temple area and saw the merchants, buying and selling and money changers, he was eaten up with zeal and began to chase them out of the temple area and turn over their tables. He told the people that my house is to be a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. This is one instance where we see the Lord's burning anger against the people of Israel because they had changed religion into a money-making business. Jesus was normally meek and mild, but in this instance, he is hot with anger. Because of Jesus' zeal and the respect people gave to him, the scribes and elders were envious and wanted to destroy him. Today, many churches are following the same pattern of money-making. The church should be a place where people come to worship, pray, and fellowship, and not a place where money is solicited from everyone. In many churches, it hardly seems possible to have a meeting without at least one or more offerings taken from the congregation. The Lord Jesus is angry with those who use religious service to make money. Please do not be deceived by false teachers and preachers who make campaigns and special meetings but cannot hide their love of money. Are they trying to spread the gospel, help the poor, feed hungry children, pay for the school fees of children who can't afford it? Or is it a nice car and a big house they are after? Perhaps they are asking for a bigger church building to do the work of God. 
How clever they are to convince their congregations of the great work God is doing among them, while the children go without and they drive in an expensive car. Remember, Jesus hates the wickedness of men who love money more than they love God. When you see that preacher or pastor shouting out the message of God with great zeal, ask yourself the question, how many poor people have been helped by him? How many children can say that the pastor has given them some food to eat or clothes to wear? Do not judge by the impressive appearance or loud preaching, but by their good works and kindness and grace shown towards the needy. When Peter saw the fig tree again that had now withered away, he was astonished that it had withered so quickly. Jesus uses this occasion to teach Peter about the power of prayer, telling him that when we have faith in God to answer, we can see God do great things through our prayers. The next day when they again entered Jerusalem, the scribes and elders questioned by what authority Jesus was doing his works. They were undoubtedly upset by his actions in the temple the previous day and wanted some occasion to accuse him or arrest him. But while they were trying to find some reason to trap him, he was able to catch them in their own trap by asking a question about John the Baptist. They did not believe John was a prophet of God and did not accept his message as being from God. However, they also knew that all the people counted John as a prophet and they did not want to create an uproar among the people, so they simply said they did not know whether John's message was from God. They could not tell him the truth that was in their hearts or it would condemn them before the people. And because they refused to tell him the truth, he also refused to tell them by what authority he did his work. Then he taught, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it into a den of thieves. Mark chapter 11 verse 17